Paramount Plus is gaining ground in the streaming landscape. It show Leto, show Yellowstone ranked as the most popular series of 2022 in YouGov's global film and TV report. And Top Gun Maverick was no sleeper either, ranked as the highest appetite score for a movie last year. Joining us now to discuss all things streaming is Paramount CFO Naveen Chopra, along with Yahoo Finance's Brian Sazi, who I think has seen Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> I, no, three times. Three times. Okay. Right. I suspected that was the case. Naveen, thank you so much for being here. Um, Thanks for having me. It's great you know, to be here. You guys have just come out strong out of the gate in terms of uh, this streaming product. How do you think about now the next phase of growth? and how you're going to attack it and keep, well, I don't know if you can keep up the same pace of growth, but how you're thinking about the strategy. Yeah, well, uh, as you said, I mean, 22 was just an incredible year for us with with Paramount Plus. And in fact, since we launched Paramount Plus uh, back in 21, it's been the fastest growing major streaming service. And that's been um, overwhelmingly driven by content. Things like 1883, the reboot of Criminal Minds, movies like Top Gun Maverick, which, which you mentioned, Smile. Uh, big time sports, the NFL, Champions League soccer. Um, and we got a whole lot more of that coming in 23, both with respect to um, new seasons of favorite franchises, new original content, uh, an incredible movie slate. Um, and so we're going to continue to lean into everything we're doing from a content perspective. Um, but we're also looking to continue to evolve the business model. We've been very focused on building scale, uh, both with respect to subscribers and revenue. Um, and now we're focused on the path to profitability, which has always been um, part of the evolution that we knew we, we had to execute against. Um, and we're now getting closer to um, um, you know, the inflection point going from investing more to ultimately uh, the path to profitability. Is this year peak investment in, in the DTC business? And when do you see profits in streaming? Uh, we have said uh, for quite some time that 2023 will be the year of peak investment in, uh, in streaming for, for Paramount. Uh, that's a function of the fact we've been uh, ramping up both our, our content slate as well as expanding distribution on, on a global basis. Um, and as I said, we've been very pleased with the success there. I think it's fair to say that we've exceeded expectations on almost all of those dimensions. You know, we added uh, over 23 million subscribers in 2022. Our total streaming business now has a revenue run rate of uh, over five and a half billion dollars. Um, so now we are starting to use that scale to drive toward profitability. Uh, we haven't put a specific timeline on that, but we do think as we move from 23 into 24, we'll see meaningful improvement in total company, both earnings and cash flow, which is obviously something that we think can be helpful uh, in terms of uh, the way investors look at the company and how they value the business. How much, you know, in terms of just consumers being receptive on, on higher prices, so Netflix out there raising prices, Disney Plus raising prices, at what point do consumers just say, I'm going to start cutting some of these services? You know, we think streaming still offers tremendous value for consumers relative to, um, for instance, what they were paying uh, five or six years ago for entertainment. Uh, the appetite for great content has not changed at all. In fact, uh, that's only continued to grow. Uh, and even today, if you subscribe to five or six different streaming services, uh, you're still probably paying less than you were uh, not that long ago for the traditional cable bundle. So we think there's a lot of legs in it. Um, and in fact, you know, there's a lot of research that shows streaming remains um, sort of at the very bottom of the list of things that people are willing to consider cutting, even in uh, tough economic times. I'd have to agree that the value to consumers is definitely there. It's also become a bit more cons <clears throat> a bit bewildering given all the choices out there. Just wondering what you're considering and seeing in terms of partnerships with other streaming services. Um, the entire landscape has been crowded for a time, but just wondering how you see it evolving and shaking out, not only for you, but maybe some of your competitors. Uh, there's no doubt that, uh, um, you know, Crowding has, has been a, a, a concern and I think a frustration for consumers. I think there's two things that we've been focused on at Paramount Plus to, to help cut through that. Number one, we're big believers in franchises. Um, you look at the content that we have um, had a lot of success with on Paramount Plus, um, it's a lot of franchise content, whether that's uh, big movies that we bring from uh, theatrical releases or even things like Yellowstone, where we've created a whole universe around that um, that has a, a built-in, very loyal, uh, very passionate audience. Uh, we've also really embraced partnerships uh, of all different uh, shapes and forms. We have uh, partners here in the U.S., for instance, with uh, Walmart, where we're bundled with Walmart Plus. 
We've announced a, uh, a partnership with Delta Airlines that'll be launching recently where people will have the ability to um, uh, see and experience Paramount Plus in flight. Uh, and we've got a variety of partnerships outside the United States that have been big drivers of growth. And those partners really help amplify our marketing uh, and drive the awareness um, that you know, uh, we want consumers to have for Paramount Plus. Of course, as you guys have really focused on this streaming strategy at core, you've tried to get rid of non-core assets. Uh, Simon & Schuster, I know, is something that's in process. BET is something that's been reported upon. What can you tell us about that and where you are in that process? Yeah, uh, as you mentioned, we, uh, we continue to look at opportunities to divest Simon & Schuster. It's a great business, but it's one that is um, not core to our, our current mission of focusing on, on video. Uh, there's been speculation around BET. Um, we, uh, we don't comment on M&A speculation, and uh, I don't think it would be appropriate for me to, uh, to do so here. But I will say that, in general, uh, we are always looking at different ways to create value for our shareholders. And to the extent that there are ways to do that by uh, buying assets, by selling assets, by restructuring assets, uh, we look at all of those uh, very carefully. We study them, and ultimately, to the extent uh, there's an opportunity to create value for shareholders, uh, we'll pursue it. Naveen, you're out in the market new with, now with a new uh, campaign popular is Paramount. How do you measure a return on that, that type of investment? Do you expect a, a subscriber lift? Yeah, thank you for asking about that, Brian. We're really excited about that campaign. Um, you know, popular is Paramount is really all about helping people understand the, the scale and power of our content. Um, you know, you, you mentioned it, you know, uh, Top Gun has obviously been the biggest movie in uh, domestic movie in 2022. Yellowstone, number one show on television, CBS, uh, number one network now for 15 years running. But what you may not realize is the fact that, for instance, in the fourth quarter, domestic consumers spent 370 billion minutes consuming just CBS content on our linear and digital platforms. That's the same amount of time that was spent consuming the entire slate of Netflix original content. So we want people to understand the scale and the influence of what we bring to the table because it unlocks a lot of value for our advertisers, our partners, and of course our customers. Yeah, interesting perspective there because we, we talk a lot about Netflix. Well, 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 yeah. Kevin Costner, is he staying at Yellowstone? You know I had to ask this stuff. I'm a fan. Uh, uh, well, everyone's a fan of Yellowstone. Yeah. Uh, number one show on television, as we've uh, mentioned a couple times. Uh, you know, Kevin's been an incredible contributor. Um, we, uh, we appreciate everything he's done for the show, uh, and we hope we can continue it. But um, if that's not in the cards, uh, we've done a great job expanding uh, the storyline and uh, uh, the broader Yellowstone universe. Um, and uh, there are obviously different paths that we can take if we have to. I'm caught up on every episode, guys. Mm. Just want to let you know that. All right, obviously I have to do the same. Naveen, thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. Me. It's good to see you in person. You too. Take care. Naveen Chopra is the CFO of Paramount and, of course, our Brian Sazi.